this is Radu from Think It Lift. Someone left a comment the other day asking if there is a need to have a refit day once or twice a week while cutting to prevent metabolic slowdown or to avoid the starvation mode. It's a very good question. My answer will probably surprise a lot of you, but I personally don't believe that a short refit, meaning a cheat meal or a cheat day, do much to prevent metabolic slowdown and I also don't believe that they can help you lose fat faster. I'll explain why in this video. However, I do believe that refits are useful and you should use them while cutting. But, they shouldn't be planned. You should have a refit only when you need it. That is, when your training performance suffers and when you want to take a break from dieting. So in this video I'm gonna talk about a few things. Number one, why short refits probably don't speed up your metabolism and also why they probably don't prevent metabolic slowdown. Number two, why refeeds may help with training performance because you'll be eating more carbs. And number three, why I think you shouldn't have a fixed refeed day in a week, but you should have it only when you need it. What I ask of you is to watch the video, listen to the information and then make your own conclusions. I don't claim to have the definitive answer here. Remember, don't be a follower, be a student. Let's first explain the logic behind refeeding. As we lose weight, our bodies begin to adapt to the shortage of food. The metabolic rate drops a little, hunger increases, um, your energy levels drop a little as well, and so do testosterone and other hormones. These adaptations are normal and are there to prevent starving to death, because our bodies don't know that we are actually losing weight on purpose. Now, refeeding is a planned increase in calorie and carb intake during a diet. Its main purpose is to reset some of the metabolic adaptations to dieting by acutely raising leptin levels. Leptin is a hormone that regulates metabolic rate, that regulates hunger, that regulates libido and has a lot of other functions in the body because it affects all the other hormones as well. The reason why leptin is so important while dieting is because it affects the metabolic rate. Studies show that leptin injections speed up the metabolism. So the logic behind refeeding is to acutely spike leptin levels by eating more carbs. In theory, that will lead to an increased metabolic rate for a few days and also prevent metabolic slowdown. But there's a problem. Spiking leptin through injections is not the same as spiking leptin by eating food. First of all, leptin injections boost up leptin levels to supraphysiological levels. Also, they accomplish this without having to eat more calories, so the person remains in a calorie deficit. This is important to remember, so you boost the metabolism while still being in a deficit. But in the case of a refit day, in order to spike leptin levels, you have to overeat, basically eliminating the calorie deficit. So although you speed up the metabolism, you are no longer in a deficit, and that is the main problem. Studies show that a full-on binge increases the metabolic rate by 3-10% to for about a day. Yeah, burning 50-200 to 200 calories more in one day sounds awesome, but think of the amount of food you have to eat to achieve that effect. You will no longer be in a calorie deficit. And that is what doesn't make sense to me. How will that help you lose fat faster? You have to eat, let's say, 600 calories to speed up your metabolism by 50 to 200 calories for a day or two. Also, as far as I understand, we don't actually know if spiking leptin by eating more carbs achieves the same effect as leptin injections. We assume it does, but we don't actually have clear evidence to support it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that the acceleration in fat loss most people report after refit day is actually something else. First of all, eating more food helps flush out the water under the skin and that can create the illusion of fat loss. Your body weight will also go down a little if you get rid of water retention. Moreover, eating more carbs may make your muscles look fuller, they may stretch your skin and that again may create the illusion of fat loss. So do refeeds help you lose fat faster? I would say no, but we'd have to wait for a few more studies to say for sure. Longer refeeds do have the potential to increase your metabolic rate, but you wouldn't lose fat in that time. Okay, but what about metabolic slowdown? I think short refeeds 
are not very useful for that either. Lyle McDonald talks a lot about this. When our body fat stores decrease, our metabolic rate will go down a little no matter what you do. When you have less fat, the overall circulating leptin levels will be lower no matter how you eat and train. And they will probably never go back to pre-diet level unless you regain the weight. That makes a lot of sense from an evolutionary point of view. Our metabolic rate slows down to prevent starving to death. So would it be a wise decision from an evolutionary point of view to reverse all the metabolic adaptations just because you had access to food for one day or a few hours? Our body doesn't think so. The story is different though with longer refeeds, lasting three days or more. When you eat at maintenance or slightly above for a few days, that will most likely reverse some of the fat loss adaptations, but again, not to pre-diet levels. Remember that the amount of calories we need for maintenance is very closely linked to our body weight. A smaller body burns less energy both at rest and during activity. So if you now weigh less, chances are you need fewer calories than before. So there are two ways to minimize metabolic slowdown using refeeds. Number one, have longer refeeds lasting a few days or have shorter refeeds more often. There is a price for that though. If you refeed that often, your weekly caloric deficit will be smaller and your cut will take a lot longer. Maybe you lose 15 pounds in 4 to 5 months. Or you could sidestep this by going very very low in calories on your dieting days so your weekly deficit will be larger, but I wouldn't recommend it. If you eat 1000 calories one day and 3000 calories the other day, you will probably become obsessed with food and uh, your fitness will take over your life completely. What I recommend is to accept the fact that your metabolic rate will go down a little while cutting no matter what you do. And you don't need to get stressed about it. Studies show that the metabolic rate slows down only about 15% more than predicted even if you lose 50% of your body weight, like in the Minnesota starvation experiment. If you lose only 10 to 15 pounds of fat, yes, your metabolism will probably slow down a little, but it will be only 100 to 100 calories maybe tops, and that's not that bad. So if short refeeds don't actually increase your metabolic rate and they don't prevent metabolic slowdown, should we give up on them completely? No, they are still useful but for other reasons. Physiologically they help boost training performance by refilling muscle glycogen and they also probably have positive effects on maintaining healthy hormonal balance. Psychologically they are also helpful because they reduce the stress associated with dieting by allowing us to eat more food for a short period of time. Now what you'll notice is that to get these benefits you don't need to have a planned refeed one day a week. You can have that refeed only when you need it. Here's what I do and what I recommend. There are two situations in which I have a refeed day while cutting. Number one, when I have no energy at the gym. When I feel weak during my workouts and I'm sure it's not psychological, then I'll have a refeed day that evening. I'll eat at maintenance or slightly above. Eating more carbs will refill your muscle glycogen and will likely restore your lost strength. I did this only one time during the last six weeks I've been cutting. One day I had a very bad chest day and uh, I went home that evening and I ate more carbs at around maintenance probably. The next workout my strength was back up and until then I actually was able to add five pounds to my bench which is great. There is one important point here though. Make sure that your uh, loss of training performance is not actually caused by your mind. If you go to the gym expecting to be weak, you'll probably lose a rep or two because of your thoughts, not because your muscles are actually depleted. For example, if the bar speed was very good on the first few reps and then suddenly you hit failure, that's probably a mental block and not a consequence of eating less. What I do is this, if I go to the gym feeling optimistic and uh, I give it everything I've got and I still lose a rep, then I don't stress about it because it's probably because I'm cutting and uh, that's when I'll, uh, I'll eat more to restore my energy levels. So do this too, if you feel weak 
and you know it's not psychological, then you can have a refit day that day. In that situation, it may help you regain your training performance. And number two, when my social life demands it. The main reason I use unplanned refits is so that I can pair them with social events that happen in my life. Over a period of five to eight weeks while you're cutting, you'll inevitably have some social events that require you to eat more than you planned. So why not take the opportunity and make those days your refit days? That way you get to enjoy the event, you get the physiological benefits of the refit day and you also completely eliminate the guilt of cheating your diet. Win, win, win. For example, over the last six weeks when I've been dieting, there have been four or five events uh, where I had to, to eat at maintenance. I was forced to eat at maintenance. I celebrated my birthday last month, uh, so of course I ate more that day. Uh, my brother graduated from college, so uh, we went out to a, nice, to a nice restaurant with our family and of course I ate more then. Then we had a friend of mine uh, called me to his housewarming party and we had a few drinks. So there, was, there were uh, a few of these social events where I had to eat. I had to eat at maintenance, so I just made those my refit days. This is a great strategy because you get the best of both worlds. In conclusion, I don't believe it's worth having refit days for the effect they have on metabolic rate. But I do believe they are useful for supporting training performance and also for reducing the psychological stress of dieting and giving you more flexibility. The best way to refit, in my opinion, is to leave them unplanned, to use them only when you need them. If you feel your training suffers because of your diet, have a refit day that day. Or if you happen to go to a social event where you have to eat more, make that your refit day and uh, you get all the benefits. Alright guys, so that's my take on the refits. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, remember, this is my opinion, you do whatever the science tells you to do. As a prize for watching the video until the end, I want to give you my free ebook, uh, Cutting Without Counting. This is an ebook I've put together to help you lose fat without counting calories directly. You will learn how to set up your food environment in a way that you will unconsciously start to eat less and be in a deficit. Click here and get it for free. Thanks again for watching the video and I'll be seeing you next time.